Hello everyone, I'm Drake the Dragon. Welcome back to Stillwater. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his findings would eventually lead him here. This is it. Hugo walks toward the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavish this part of this house is. From customized drapes to vintage furniture, Everything here exudes that extravagance. But much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is moldering despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here for too long. Oh, we're just going straight to almost midnight. Okay. He searches and searches, still with no sign of anything. Not one thing pertaining to Lewis. Damn it, nothing? It's as if he cleared out everything, just blank everywhere. No, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is the only proof Lewis exists so far. I'll try to read it again, maybe I overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he notices a change within. Bearing no foreboding threat at the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. What the? If you can't come, then I understand. It's pretty dreary after all. Ah, uh, but if I can ask one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Louis. This is the same Lewis? That is the love letter, y'all! I thought he was the cause of all of this. I don't understand. Without warning, the sound of a cliff can be heard across the bedroom, as if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns around and sees, at the foot of the bed, a chest. Unlike the other furniture, its dark and rustic features have not been maintained well. Left to rot on its own. Prepa preparing himself, he opens the chest. Inside, scrambled together, are bunches of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumbles across an old newspaper's article. Young man found dead by the lake. Ooh. An unidentified young man was found on the morning of... whatever three days prior to his death, according to police. I'm sorry, prior or post? <laughs> Ruled out as a suicide, police have claimed that the troubled youth drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event indeed, someone comments. No claim of his body has been made yet. Lewis. By the corner of Hugo's eye, he spots a bright glint buried beneath the clutter. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining a timeless luster. Inside, it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses, smiling brightly. This must be the locket that he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture... Did he put this here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? What should I do? Oh, do I take the locket or leave the locket? I mean... If I take it, am I like keeping it or am I giving it to... The guy downstairs? I... Like, if I'm using it as evidence, I'll take it. But if I'm stealing it, then I don't want to take it. 
Is this going to be like a big ass decision? I don't know. It's the first decision I'm making. How long is this game? I don't know. <laughs> Let me just quickly save at that point and uh, take the locket. I should probably hold on to this for now. Hugo is about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. Oh no. What? Water? A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor, already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly the lights shut off. Oh god. A scream is heard, followed by a myriad of shouts. Oh no. Hugo is about to call out to Noah, but he stops at the sight of pale feet before him. Oh god! Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. I am covering my face. I'm sorry the audio is weird, but I am scared. He appears as a young man. Hugo knows it's far from it. No, this very thing is trying to imitate a human form, trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he is forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps toward him. It's just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from within. No, please, but this time it's drawing nearer. No, thank you. Inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach out. Lodged in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. And then it stops. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. No thank you! No thank you! All of a sudden, the door to the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he gasps desperately for air. His vision blurred and breathing jagged, he staggered towards the door. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's tightly jammed. Fuck! Noah! Colby! To his dismay, he's only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Damn it! From a distance, he faintly hears the sounds of Colby's relentless barking as it gets further away from the house. He rushes towards the window, tries to pry it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents it from doing so. Prevents him from doing so. Fuck this! Frantically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made out of? Still trying to catch his breath, he musters all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn it! Damn you, just break already! Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peers his head out to see any railing that he can grab hold of. However, he discovers instead that the wall adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet to his luck, the patch of vines he clutches start to tear away from the wall. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when his hand slips out of reach. Shit. Clamoring wildly as he loses grip on the ivy, he crash lands down onto a thicket of bushes. Air forced out of him, he heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious. An immense pain spreads across not only his back, but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. You're in, like, your 20s, dude. Although his body screams out in pain, he forces himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake where this tragedy starts and ends. What the fuck? Finally entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby, Noah, where are you? He hears faintly the sounds of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. 
He rushes toward the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa! Let me go! My grandpa is... Nina, please, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt, too. I don't care. I, I don't want to lose anyone anymore. It's at that instant Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing in Nina's stead. Hugo? No, don't! Please fall deaf to his ears. Not even the whines and worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and disheveled, as if all the life had been drained from him, surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please come back to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he still stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them. To Nina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it. A slight jolt from Henry's arm, as if stirred by the mention of Nina. He slowly turns to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo's hold on him. All of this is my fault. If only... If only I got to Lewis sooner, then none of this would have happened. Henry inches even closer to the edge. Lewis, I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lewis. I... I read what he wrote to you those years ago. He understood if you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Lewis never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Lewis's locket. Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why. You don't have to shoulder all that pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Lewis. All of it. Together. Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. Promise that Henry had yearned for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. What fool believes in a deserved forgiveness? Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet, despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him. To a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slithers around Henry's instead. Oh god. Its arms unnaturally contort around him, while its head perches on his shoulder. This thing. This Lewis is no longer pretending to be human. With piercing cold green eyes, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved? We can be forgiven? There is only one true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest of endings. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him into the abyss. Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shocks running rampant through his body, like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the tips of his fingers. Fiercely and unyielding, his chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs, hoping whichever way he goes he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. 
as he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck, violently squeezing all the air from him. He tries desperately to wrench its hands away, but with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Louis, where are you, Louis? It's looking for Louis. Digging deep into his coat pocket, he grasps tightly in his hand the locket that Henry kept and had long forgotten, holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark. Ah, there you are. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kicks with all his might to grab Henry's arm. With his heart burning and his body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there, I just have to. As the lights from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Before he loses his consciousness, he notices a figure swimming toward them, getting closer and closer. And then everything fades to black. Drifting along with what feels like an endless sea, Hugo courses through wave after wave, not knowing where he's going or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he got a good night's rest? Ugh, it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I'd like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. I'm sorry for startling you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Louis, you've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cries out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. What? With his eyes closed and his senses still returning, he feels the constant tugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Whining as he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo! He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for comfort. Eyes shot right open, he jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he coughs up the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah starts to pat his back while Colby continues to whine over Hugo. What happened? Where is Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of, thank goodness? I swear you don't listen to a damn word I say. I'm sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively. When someone approaches them. Detective Lauren? Oh, Nina. There's someone I want you to meet. Behind her stands an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side pensively as he ponders to himself. Although his youth had long faded, his eyes are what catches Hugo's attention. They are no longer a piercing and vicious green. Only eyes, just like Nina's. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Lewis lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I dragged everyone down. And I kept hurting not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her, the one to blame for all of this. But you, 
Someone that I've never met. Bill went out of your way to save me. Not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. It's my pleasure, sir. But before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hand one last time. I hope that someday you too will overcome it. Hmm. Oh my god! We got some gay boys being gay and overcoming. The tonal shifts in this game, the fuck? Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. Morning. With much fervor and haste, Hugo resumes writing on his notepad. Although by closer inspection, he looks like he's going to combust any minute. Are you writing up the report? Without looking up, Hugo responds back. Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours too. I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet, and I don't like eating by myself. Aww. Let me guess. Two is better than one? Bingo. Wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Aw, oh, shot it, will you? I swear. If only I hadn't fallen off from that goddamn window, maybe my report would have been shorter. Before Noah could begin to cut the bacon, he pauses at the mention of Hugo's report. Oh yeah, by the way? Mind telling me what happened to the Mortimer's window? Um... I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is, why is it broken? Do you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know, it was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. And also the bill. And? Surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You just called it a day after all of that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it, you pay for it. Would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Said we already went through a lot for them, so this was nothing in comparison. Ugh. You know what? He's right. After all that we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Colby follows after him. Wait, what about breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. Heavily sighing, Noah sets aside the food on his desk and joins the other two at the couch. Oh boy. Ugh, I'm getting old. Come on, look at him! I mean, you are old. Shut it. Colby whines, asking for head scratches. Aw, oh, sorry, boy. Silently, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ears as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad you came along yesterday. Oh, what's this? Are you getting chummy with me now? Call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. If you haven't saved us back there. Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, didn't you say this was nap time? Get some rest. You deserved it. You too. A calming silence fills the room as the three fall deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations, just each other's comfort and sharing this small but rewarding night's rest. Good ending, a night's rest. Thank you for making this game! Are you kidding me? That was so cool! It was actually really short. I totally could have done it all in one video, but I'm kind of glad we split it up. Only one major decision. I'm so glad I took that fucking locket. So, Grandpa Mortimer had a boyfriend. And the boyfriend had an accidental drowning, I think. And 
Grandpa Mortimer was just haunted by that shit. Was there actually, like, an entity that lived in the lake that was preying on him and guilting him into basically giving his life as well? I'm not sure. But either way, the locket kind of solved the issue, didn't it? So... Gay man recognizes other gay man, says, look, I get it, you're old, this was hugely taboo in your time, but we can talk about you losing your partner. He didn't blame you, it's okay. And he was like, I hope you get over what you're going through as well, fellow gay person. <laughs> it was kind of, it was sweet, it's cool, I like how it ended with little cute nap times. It was all really good. Just like, what do I even say that... What is the break room? Ooh, okay. There's some little... There's a jukebox. There's a concept gallery. Wow. I like that. Some dev notes. Henri. Hi, my name is Henri and I'm the writer and creator of Stillwater. At the beginning of this journey, I was extremely nervous about writing. As my first game jam, I placed an unnecessary amount of pressure on my shoulders. I've had many setbacks throughout this month, but I've come to learn so much more about not only myself, but my friends and their passion for this project. They've made this story for what it has become, and I'm proud they were part of this journey with me. In all honesty, I think I was on this road for a long time. Hugo, my beloved detective, was with me all throughout my high school years from concepts to alternative stories. I would draw him all the time after lunch or during classes. However, after a while, I just stopped. I wouldn't think of him, nor would I draw him anywhere. He was always floating, never landing. It was only till this year that I came to realize something about Hugo. To me, he was always there from the beginning. Through all my success and all my pain, he was always there. And luckily, he crash-landed on this project. Literally. To all of you who have read to the end, thank you for joining me and my friends on the journey. Maybe one day we'll see each other again until next time. Ota. Ayo, Ota here. I was a sprite artist and UI designer, as well as other jobs for Stillwater. This has so far been the wildest month for me, my first jam and all, with the team no less. There were a great many mistakes and lessons learned throughout the whole process. I think it was a great opportunity to relearn the production line as well, since it's been a while since I worked on a project with others. When I say everyone worked hard on this project, everyone went off on this project. Henri, Sasa, Zoe? Hell yeah. I'm really proud of this team and everyone's efforts in this project, and I hope you enjoy it as well. But Sasa worked on the backgrounds for the game, few other duties regarding color. Oh, it's our first release, so we really poured all our efforts into this. It was an ambitious little project. I'm so proud of my talented and hardworking friends for pulling through with me to the end. I learned the game jams are difficult and nerve-wracking, but an incredibly rewarding experience overall. Bittersweet to close this chapter, but I hope you enjoyed Hugo's story. So the programmer. Wild but fun ride, especially since learning how to use whatever that is. Really had fun animating those scenes, so I hope you enjoyed them. It's been a while since I last released a visual novel, and I don't plan for this one to be my last. Let's hope Hugo gets another case to solve soon. We created this studio in hopes that with all our talents combined, we can help bring each other's ideas to life. Please look forward to our future projects absolutely. This is awesome. Let's look at the credits. Studio Clump. This is awesome. Alright, everyone, you know, give them a, a follow. I'm going to definitely check out if they did put out anything else, though I've not seen it, but absolutely. This was so cool. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I thought the story was really good. The atmosphere was good. I was so invested. It was fantastic. And I was really spooked by the weird presence in the bedroom. It was fucking weird so yeah thank you again and i will see y'all super soon in the next one bye for now